All right, so the bags are packed and that is everything I'll be taking with me on a three week trip through Asia. And hey folks, it is Wednesday, April 5th. The time is 9.38 p.m. And in about 12 minutes or so, a lift will be showing up to pick me up and take me to Pearson Airport. And then from there, I'll record my journey through the airport. And this one's gonna be a little bit special because for the first time, yeah, this is the first time I've ever taken business class on a long haul flight. I'll be flying from Toronto to Seoul via Air Canada Signature Class. Unfortunately, I won't have access to the Signature Lounge, but I will have access to the regular lounge. So I'll be offering up my thoughts and opinions on what that experience was like, as well as the flight. And then once I land in Seoul, I'll be taking the airport train to the subway, and then I'll be going to the Airbnb. So I will catch up with you once I get to the airport. All right, see you soon. And I have arrived. And I'm here at Pearson Terminal 1. And that was a rather uneventful lift ride, which I guess is a good thing when you're making your way to catch a flight. It's about quarter after 10 right now. And there is an up express train. And that'll be making its way to Toronto Union Station. And I had three options to get here. Either take the TTC, the Up Express, or take a Lyft or Uber. And I think I might have dodged a bullet because on the radio they mentioned that the TTC was not operating on line two between Kiel and Ossington Station. So I probably would have been sweating bullets if I opted to take that route. There's the terminal link train. All right, let's head into the terminal here. gates. So this is for domestic flights. Two o'clock, Seoul Incheon, AC 61, aisle five, E 76. Although I already have my boarding pass, there's where you would check in if you didn't already take care of that as well as drop off your bags I've been refreshing my phone every now and then seeing if I can update my seat as unfortunately I don't have an aisle seat or rather, I don't have a window seat. Hi, bro. How Hello. Are you? Good. How are you? I'm not. You I saw you on YouTube. Oh, I'm making Make a YouTube. Do you want to be in a video right now? Yes. Oh. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> so um, I, I watch you all, a lot of time. Oh, awesome. Well, nice Finally, to meet you. I'm here and met you. Where are you flying to? No, my mom come back oh. to Ukraine. Oh, Ukraine. Wow, welcome. Yeah. She stayed here one month. Welcome. All right. Yeah, well, it's finally I saw you. Well, tune into probably in like three, four days. This video will be online. So I saw last time your last video from Toronto. What does it mean? That Enjoy. was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to Asia now for three weeks. 
So, uh, yeah, take so. Care. All right, nice to meet you. Nice to, nice to meet you. you. Cheers. That says main passengers only there. But since I'm a fancy boy and have a business class ticket, I believe I have some kind of status. And I think this might be priority at the end here. This is my first time actually flying business class on a long haul. I've done a flight from Canada to the US on business class before, but that was really nothing special. It was just kind of a slightly larger seat at the front of the plane. I'll talk a bit about this upgrade process once I'm through. Welcome please scan your Toronto boarding pass. Priority lane. Please scan your boarding pass. Please Amazing. And now I get to go through the same security that everyone else does. And there's really no line to skip there. All right, I'm going to put my camera gear away just before I head through security here. So I will resume once I'm on the other side. And we are good. For some reason, my bag got flagged. And he literally looked in it for about two seconds and closed it right away and said, away you go. And the last time I flew international here, that security checkpoint was closed and you had to go through the D gate entrance. So I think I'm just going to head straight to the airport lounge. And the way I ended up in signature class is Air Canada has a system where you can place a bid to upgrade your seat to either premium economy or their signature, signature class products. And last Friday on a live stream, I put up a poll asking if I should bid on business class. And the overwhelming answer was yes, go for it. So I did, the minimum bid was 1200 and I think the recommended bid was about 1700. So I put in a bid of 12.30. And sure enough, that went through. I got a notice about 48 hours before the flight that my bid was accepted. And honestly, I didn't know if I should laugh or cry at that point. <laughs> it's a lot of money just to sit in a different chair for 14 hours. All right, let's be lazy. And that's $1,200 I could have put into five-star hotels or just kept in the bank, but we'll see how this goes and if I think it's worth doing it again or not. Although it's worth noting, I don't get all of the perks. There is a special signature class lounge 
which I will not have access to. Which I guess is only fair when you pay a lot less than the people who paid full, full price for Signature. It's only fair that they get to keep some things for themselves. Might as well get some steps in. Since I won't be moving much on the 14 and a half hour flight. So I'll be making my way to Seoul for three nights. Then I'm gonna jump on a Thai Airways flight to Bangkok, and then I'll be flying Vietnam Airlines to Hanoi. And then I'm on another special flight from Hanoi to Saigon that I'm quite excited about. So you'll see more about that in an upcoming video. And then from Saigon, it's back to Bangkok. Well, BKK Airport, Suwani Boom. Then I'll be heading over to Jomtien in Pattaya. And I'll be meeting up with some friends and some fellow YouTubers. And then I'll be back to Bangkok for a night or two and then flying Thai Airways to Incheon in Seoul and then back to Toronto. All right, so here's the part where I would normally head over towards the gates. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that and see if there's a gate agent there now before I head on up to the Maple Leaf Lounge. Oh, there it is, straight ahead. So let's just head down to the gate first quickly. Just in case there's a gate agent there, I can inquire about getting one of those coveted business class window seats. I forget what gate I'm at, according to my boarding pass. That's good, my phone decided to close all my apps. E76. business class lounge is busy, or I guess the Maple Leaf Lounge, because a lot of people will be there. With status from other airlines. But maybe I'll just head down here and hang out. Yeah, I didn't think so. This one says Vienna and Delhi on it. All right, I will magically transport myself back up towards the lounge, so I'll be Back in a moment here. There were only down escalators, so I thought I would take the elevator up. Plan super elite. I don't think that is me. Maybe one day we'll get there. I'm just a regular aeroplane peasant. Hi. Yep. Thank you. I wonder 
if she knows I'm one of these upgraded folks. Oh, this will be nice and comfortable. I have heard that this place can be somewhat of a zoo. Self-serve soda. Alcohol. That's pretty awesome. Hello. I might still opt to go get a Starbucks and have that instant coffee. And there's a business center here. Do some printing. USB-A plugs and the power outlet. The only thing this is really missing is a clear view. On some of the gates. It's not the best place for plane watching. And I think I missed a section. So I'm going to find a spot to settle down. I might even do a live stream from here at some point. There we go. We've got a salad bar. Guacamole, that's fancy. I guess we're still in breakfast mode. Well, there was absolutely no line at security in this place. It is nowhere near capacity. Go in there and interrupt them. Oh, and I know like a meal to be a meal give him like a, a half a cup of pink vent to you know too early again, so he'll be by next. Yeah. A couple of showers as well. Perfect. So I think I've uncovered everything. Okay. Maybe I'll grab a salad and a beverage. And I'll check back at some point. If not, I will see you when it's time to board. All right, so the food was pretty good. I would say six or seven out of 10. The slider was kind of on the cool side, despite the fact that they just put it out. But otherwise, I don't really have much to complain about. Except I tried to pour my own Guinness and this is what happened. So rather than throw it out, I'm going to wait for that to settle in. And I'm just going to chill here for a while and I think I'll do a live stream. Oh, and I have some amazing news. I was able to upgrade my seat to a window seat. I got seat 3K. But I noticed my online boarding pass didn't update, so I went over and talked to the agent at the lounge here. 
and he printed me a boarding pass and then he noticed that that seat was marked as the entertainment system not working. So he moved me to the window seat in front of it, which is 2K. So I'm quite excited about that. Anywho, I will be back. All right, so it is now 1.02 p.m. The scheduled boarding time was at 1 p.m. So it's probably a good time just to go see how things are going along over at the gate. I do have a few beers in me now. Here is E75. Vienna, Zurich. Maybe my gate changed? My boarding pass. So 75 on it, let's see. Soul E76. So 76 is over here, and there's a big crowd of people. And I think I see the bird over there. That's the 787.9 Dreamliner. They are pretty awesome planes. So let's go see. If they are boarding yet, it looks like I see some people over on the far end. All right, I have to snake my way through all these people. Excuse me. I'm going to figure out what's going on. I'm that's me over there. All right, I will resume when it's time to actually board the plane. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I am off to what they call signature class and seat two K. Probably stop recording when I get to the seat just to put my bags up top. But I'll come back. Welcome. 
Please cross over and to your uh, left. Hello, come on board. Have the window seat over this side. Well, this is fancy. Home sweet home. All right, so I have settled in. I've got my bag at my feet. Plenty of leg room, and I haven't even reclined the seat all the way yet. I won't be able to do that until we're well up into the air. But for reference, I'm 5'11", and this is easily the most leg room I've ever had. There's a very large screen. I believe that is the largest in class in this compartment here. There's a power outlet, system controls, a USB-A port, and a headphone port. They give you some slippers. This Aqua Di Parma amenities kit included this face mask, there's some socks, a dental kit, and there's a couple of bottles of lotion in there. They give you a water and some noise canceling headphones, which I'm sure I'll put to the test. As you can see, it is raining at the moment. And there's a look at the cabin and nobody is in that seat behind me yet. The one with the entertainment system that doesn't function. But all right, I will report back once we are up in the sky. Your safety is our top priority. Please take a moment to watch our safety features video. At this time, has been connected to a portable electronic device, but being removed. All right, it's time to eat. This is the appetizer. And for the main course, I'll be having the beef tenderloin. And then later for breakfast, I think that'll come towards the end of the flight. I asked for an omelet, so I'll show you what that is. All right, it is time to eat. This is just the appetizer. Not entirely sure what that is. It looks like salmon maybe, a salad. I declined the bread and I have a Diet Coke and a beer. And for the main course, I'll be having the beef tenderloin. So I will come back once that is served and let you know how that goes. And my beef tenderloin with veal sauce, fingering potatoes, zucchini and tomatoes has arrived. And that appetizer was quite fantastic. Apparently that was salmon, fennel, and orange salad with honey mustard dressing served with fresh seasonal salad and warm bread.
although I declined on the bread. There's a look at the menu options. And then later on, I'll be having the omelet for breakfast. Anyways, time to put the camera down and dig into this. And I'll let you know how this goes. Oh, there's some turbulence for you. I'll let you know how this <laughs> bill goes next time I come back, if I remember to. And dessert has arrived. Okay, so everything about that beef tenderloin meal was fantastic. Except for the beef tenderloin. It was just a little bit dry and tough. But still, it was probably the best main course I've ever had on a flight. So I'll give it that. And I imagine the dessert will be pretty good. It's pretty hard to screw this up. And if the angle is somewhat lower, that's because I've got the seat halfway reclined. And on these windows over here, I can dim them with those buttons, which I'll show you later if I remember to. And another cool touch is while I can choose a TV show or a movie on this screen, I can put the flight map up on the controller there. Although I don't have that activated right now. So I'm not sure <laughs> why I opened that to show you. But there's a lot of really nice little touches on this flight. Anyways, time to go back to watching Hacks. That's a HBO show. And consuming this dessert. All right, and now you will never guess where I am, actually. It's probably quite easy to guess where I am because I am in a bathroom with a view. Look at that. I've never been inside an airplane bathroom that had a window before. Or one that was this spacious, but we've got a toilet, soap of course. It's really no different than the bathrooms in economy class except it's much bigger and I have a feeling they clean it a bit more often there's no drips or puddles on the floor the waste bin isn't overflowing and again you have that window which you can even adjust and you can make it darker if you want I've been in airplane bathrooms that had a bit more in the way of amenities. Sometimes there's like a toothbrush or earplugs, but I guess where I'm sitting, they give you that amenities kit. So that's not really necessary. So everything you need is either in here or at your chair, but all right, let's head back to my chair. And I will show you one of the party tricks. And I am <laughs> just about completely flat. Although I guess I'll have to get the pillow to
properly enjoy this. <laughs> there we go. All right, back to the flight. And we are at about the halfway mark of the flight. And this chicken pot pie and potato wedges have just appeared. Accompanied by an apple juice and some roasted salted almonds. We are 5,122 kilometers away from Seoul. And I've already started editing this video that you're watching right now on the laptop. And I have the digital blinds at their middle setting, which is three out of five, but it's actually quite bright outside. So I just turned them up. It should be getting a lot lighter. All right, and there is your mid-flight status update. So good morning, everyone. And if I seem confused by that, it's <laughs> because it feels like I have no idea what time it is right now. But it's time to eat my omelet. So that means we're about 90 minutes away from landing. There's the omelet. And there's the fruit. And I have an orange juice and a coffee. And I just spent the last maybe two or three hours with the bed in the lie flat position. And yes, I am extremely tired. And it looks like the screen is flickering on my camera, but I can't be bothered to go change those settings. So time to eat breakfast. I'll be back.
All right, and welcome to Korea. That was an extremely comfortable yet uneventful flight. And I actually managed to catch some sleep on a cross-ocean flight for the first time in my life, actually. I have Q code. Thank you. So if you completed your Q code ahead of time, apparently that'll save you a lot of hassle at this airport. It's just a basic health questionnaire, but you can do it online ahead of time. It's in my pocket. Yeah, okay. Well, that was easy. I just had to turn my camera off while I pulled it out of my pocket there. I was last at this airport about four years ago. I was first here in 2017. And it's usually fairly quick and efficient to get in. I'll stop recording in a moment, but I will resume once they have hopefully allowed me to enter the country. And I'll let you know how long this took. All right. <laughs> and I am in. That took about 25 minutes or so. And up until April 1st, a KETA was required for Canadians to enter Korea. And I applied and paid for that before they decided to cancel it. And it just came in a little bit handy as I did not need to show them any arrival card or anything like that, but I do have to have my customs declaration here. The joys of being carry-on only here. Thank you. I do need to pick up a few dollars in Korean money. I can use Samsung Pay and my credit card pretty much everywhere. And I need to pick up my SIM card. I believe is at gate 10, maybe CBEF. I think possibly in this direction. So welcome to Incheon Airport, Terminal 1. And I guess I should add service on that flight was fantastic. 
for all the guff that Air Canada gets these days. They certainly go all out. Is this where my SIM card is? Mine is Kluke. They certainly go all out on their signature class products. That guy was <laughs> looking for someone who needed a taxi, but I think I'm gonna take the train in. So props to Air Canada. There is LG U Plus. KT, there we go. I think this is what I need. All right, I'm gonna stop recording here. And I will return once I have a SIM card in hand. All right, I've got my SIM card and I just changed 150 Canadian cash. So I'm going to head over to the airport railroad. I think if I take the rail, it'll take about the same amount of time as if I take the bus. But I wanna go get my T-Money card set up. That's the transit pass you use here. Although it can be used for a number of other things as well, such so as paying for taxis and in convenience stores and that sort of thing. I will have to transfer at some point. And it definitely helps to arrange your SIM card ahead of time. I think I got a better deal. I have an unlimited five day SIM card. And it does include calling. I'm not sure if I'll need that. Oh, airport railroad down this way. My first time ever in this airport was when I was moving to Korea. And they told me and some other guy who was coming in from Minnesota to meet here. And we were looking for this guy named Benny <laughs> to take us to what we thought was gonna be our apartment, but it turned out to be a love motel for the first few nights. And we had a hell of a time trying to find that guy. So I'm just kind of assuming There will be machines that sell T-Money cards when I get there. And this is my first time at this airport since they opened up Terminal 2. Could take the lazy way, but after a 14 and a half hour flight, I think I should get some steps in. I'm pretty sure there's a movie theater just over in that direction. Airport Railroad Express. That might be the Maglev line. I'm pretty sure that is what I'm looking for. And where I'm, or <laughs> where I'm staying is an Airbnb at Jungak Station, or very near Jungak Station on Line 1. So I think I'll have to transfer at Seoul Station.
express train. At 48. It is currently 45. And if I miss that, uh oh. I don't even know where, oh, it goes to Seoul Station. Can I do this? Please select your departure. Oh, my train isn't even on there. Okay. I think he just told me if you're going to the metro, it's best just to go this way. I think those are tea money vending machines. Tea money vending machine, 15 minutes to the right. 15 meters. Oh, they're inside the fare paid zone. All right, so I have to buy a ticket. This is a disposable transportation card printout machine. Please select preferred service. Please select arriving station. Please select number of passengers and insert cash. One ticket. The ticket has been issued. If you want the cash receipt, please select print receipt. The receipt has been printed. Say business expense. So give me that receipt. I think I'm going to Seoul Station. Next train, 1853. Not lose this card. Seoul Station. Oh, I could have gone to Hongdae Station as well. Oh. Pretty sure this is the same thing. All right, so I'm not gonna record the journey on the train necessarily, but I've taken you from getting off the plane to the train. Things are relatively orderly. All right, I'll stand on this one on the right here. All right, next train in two minutes. Maybe I'll resume recording once it rolls in. I 
think some of these people made their way over from Terminal 2. Yeah, no problem. Welcome to Seoul Station. So I need to transfer to line one. And where I'm going is two stops away. And this is where you would catch the KTX high-speed train. these monster escalators. I'm just going to stop for a second and pull out my card. I'll need to tap this out. Or I think I stick it into the machine and then I never see it again. I can make my way over to line one. And if memory serves me correct, this is a pretty long transfer. Oyosan, I think that's where I'm heading. They put the last stop to indicate the direction you need to go. And you'll notice the train announcements were in Korean, English, Japanese, and Mandarin. And 
and they have the notices of when the next trains are due and the different lines on those signs. And the apps will even tell you when you're transferring what the optimal door to enter the train is. So that will give you the shortest possible transfer time. All the doors have numbers. There's a lot of really thoughtful touches on the Seoul Transit system here. All right, let's see. Card. And it's escalator number four. And where I'm going, I think we'll pass by City Hall Station and then my station in Jongno. Well, it's not my station, but you get the idea. It is kind of walkable from here. I'm a bit eager to get there as quick as possible. And there you can see the little animated trains making their way to the next stop. And this is also the way to the KTX which I've taken a few times. And you can go across the entire country on that, down to Busan. And that's helpful. The first all-stop train is at 5.20. I might be taking that on Sunday morning. A luggage escalator, that's pretty awesome. And now we enter a much older part of the station, if you can't tell. This is line four. I need to go down to line one. I'm kind of looking for a tea money machine around here, but I don't see one. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to tap out. All right, I didn't think I would be in the fair paid zone. I don't think my fare is going to cut it, so I'm gonna go up. And see if this card I have can be topped off. So it'll let me tap out at Jungak. I saw a fare adjustment machine here. Oh, 
All right, I'm gonna try to figure this out. Where did I put that cart? Not a card for Farad. Please inquire at station officer. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure this out. And I will come back. <laughs> okay, so I just stepped out of the fair paid zone. And it doesn't look like there's a T-Money card vending machine here. So I'm just gonna buy a single journey. To Jongak. This is testing my skills here. Select a single journey ticket and the number of tickets you wish to purchase. Then insert money. Okay, insert money. There's a five thousand bill, which is roughly five dollars. It's asking me to deposit 500 won. I do not have a... I mean 500 won coin, but there we go. I think it took the bill. So I have a single journey ticket here. There's my change. All right, at least I'm not gonna run into issues exiting the next station. It cost me a few minutes, but so be it. I guess we're dealing with a late afternoon or early evening rush hour crowd here. Early evening, what time is it? Late evening? I want to go on the left here. And what's inter in really interesting about line one is you'll notice the trains are on the left side. I think this station is a, or this line is a remnant from Japanese imperialism. I'm going to hop on the train and I'll resume recording once I get two stops away to Jungak. Open gangways even on a really old train. says one, two, three, four, five, six. But I thought I need exit nine. Oh well, let's see.
One, two, three, four, five, six up there. I think this is a pretty big station, actually. And in hindsight, what I could have done, I think, is from the airport train, since you never leave the fare paid zone, is I could have bought a ticket that took me to Jongak Station, and that way I wouldn't have had to kind of purchase two of these. Although I think it's cheaper if you buy your fares on a T-Money card versus these single journey tickets. But I can refund each of these cards for about 50 cents or 500 Korean won. Seven to twelve, Bancholgu, which means exit this way. Please redeem your deposit after getting off. Please redeem your deposit after getting off. All right. Let's get some more coins in my pockets. Okay. Answer card. I have another one. I think my ticket <laughs> is stuck. Get in there. So I just... Um... Oh well, I don't need 50 cents that bad. If I press the call for assistance button, I'll probably be waiting a while. <laughs> Sorry about that, Korea. But the card would pop in there. So these underground markets are quite common in the subway stations here. Or I used to live at Gangnam Station. That's something very similar to this. Exit 9. Seems it might be raining. There's the famous Samsung building. It's not raining that bad. There's a dedicated busway in the middle there. This is not an area where I've lived. I came here often my first year in Seoul. There's tons of great food. And bars and entertainment options all on this small condensed area between the Chungae Chun River, which is straight ahead, and that main street where I was. Yeah. 
Buda Bia with beer. If you see a place like that and the beer looks impossibly cheap, the reason for that is you're expected to buy a side dish called Anju with the beer. You can't just show up and order their dirt cheap beer and that's it. Fair is fair. Hotel, but I am in this building. That was relatively painless. And other than that snafu with transferring at Seoul Station. I think I knew my way around reasonably well enough. Of course, having lived here kind of helps. And I'll probably do a video on this Airbnb. Maybe I'll put that one on the Stumbles channel. I don't really know. There is a guy who needs sleep. I don't know if this video will be one part or two parts. It feels like it might be kind of long for just one video. But I don't normally do the two part thing. There should be a door password here. Not gonna record that of course. Password fail. There we go. All right. Great success. Ooh. We are in. I'm gonna have to figure out the light situation. But whatever, I think I'm gonna <laughs> wrap this one up here. I'll probably do a more in-depth look around the Airbnb, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Either starting from Toronto and making my way all the way to Seoul, or maybe starting at Incheon Airport, depending on if I did this as one video or two. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below, and if you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides, and there is a super thanks button if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink!